Good afternoon, Roy. Hello, Jim. Happy. Very, very nice to see you. Same. In strange circumstances. First of all, many, many thanks for providing Amazon Prime Video with the top of the table game at three o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And uh, I'd just like you to, if you could, to talk about your team's transformation, the reasons for it after that horrible run at the end of the last season. How come you've hit the ground running this time around? Yeah, transformation is not really the word I think I would have used. We had a, a difficult spell, not least of all because of the injuries and the, the uh, severity, if you like, of some of the fixtures, the teams we met. But in fact, in those games, some of the performances were far from being poor performances. And on another occasion, I think we'd have taken a lot more points from those nine games. So in actual fact, there wasn't the need for an enormous transformation. It was really more a question of keeping things going, making certain that we continue to try and improve on anything which needed improvement. And one of the things that we've been able to do in this transfer winners is bring in two players who've made a a difference certainly in terms of the competition so far to our attacking phase of play in, in, in terms of Eze and, and Michi Batshuayi we suddenly have two more players who I think look like they're going to score goals and make goals and that also is something which has been very useful to us especially with the re-emergence if you like from injury of Geoffrey Schlup. How much does it help you to hit the ground running uh, in the Premier League, which I believe is slightly out of character with Bristol Palace. Yes, it is. That's right. We normally finish well, so I hope that's still going to be the case because the Corona virus season doesn't interest me quite as much in terms of our usual finishes as the seasons before it. Um, it's always good to get points on the board. I think we looked at our fixtures when they came out and thought this is going to be a very difficult period for us because first Southampton, Man United, Everton and then Chelsea. So it's very good to have already got some points on the board. But perhaps most importantly, it's very good to have seen the team perform in the way they've done in those two previous matches. And now we know that we've, we're capable of that level of performance. So we've got to try and reproduce it again. And just one last one from me, Roy, you talk about the coronavirus season. What is the toughest aspect of your job, having teams play in empty stadiums and things like that? What, what's really tough about managing a team and sending them out in the right mood? Well, that's a very good question. I don't really know the answer to it. I mean, it, it, the, the situation for me still is rather surreal. It is, it's not, not the same after so many years of being used to going to big stadia and seeing lots of people around both before, of course during and after the game and suddenly we, we seem to be working in, in isolation. Um, we're glad to be working in isolation because it means we're working. The alternative would have been not to have been working at all. But in terms of the motivation of the players, I think that all the teams have done very, very well. We, I certainly have got no complaints about our motivation and our ability to get ourselves in the right frame of mind to play the matches but that goes also for the opponents that we, we've met so the quality of the football actually it, it hasn't I don't think changed that much it's still there because we are talking about top quality players but the atmosphere and the ambience around the matches has changed enormously and of course everybody misses the fans because the fans give you that extra fillip to your to your performance and to your games and we've all been hoping that we'd see them back at least in some form sooner rather than later and I think the disappointment that that's been pushed back could definitely impact upon teams especially those teams who regard themselves as being totally dependent upon their home crowd to, to, to get them over the line but I can't really say that we've, we've suffered enormously in that respect and certainly no more than anybody else. Thank you very much, Roy. I look forward to seeing you. The uh, same, Jim. Face. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. The same. Thanks very much. We'll go to Sky, Aidan McGee. Hi, Roy. Just, Aiden. You mentioned last week that Nathaniel Klein was training with you. How long will you give him to prove he's worthy of a contract with you and how's it progressing more generally? Well, there's, there's no rush. I mean, we don't have a timeline. We don't... Uh, 
I suppose the timeline might be decided by him because you know he might come one day and say look I've got this club and that club who want to take me and they've offered me a contract now what are you going to do at the moment I think he's still quite happy to be getting his uh, playing level up to the the standard that he knows he can reach uh, and of course we're interested in seeing if that standard is a standard that we expect from him and have seen so often from him so I'm just happy that he's here he's, he's done three sessions if you like now with the team which is very good or two sessions sorry two 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 full sessions with the team so it's still quite early doors but I must say he's looking good and I'm happy to be working with him and I'll be having conversations with him on a on a regular basis and then we'll have to see how our squad pans out because you know, if, if he was under 21, I don't think there'd be too much doubt what we want to do. It's the fact that he's over age and you're only allowed 25 players in your squad, so I'll have to look and see how that pans out as well. Right, I just want to pick up on a point um, Jim touched on a few minutes ago and you had a difficult end to last season in terms of the results, but you managed to turn it around despite not having a lengthy close season to work in. Your injury list, as you mentioned, didn't shorten as much as you would have expected. You couldn't therefore forecast the start to the season you've had, albeit only two games, but that went at Old Trafford, of course, last week. Yeah, but I think the point that to to emphasise there is that it's only two games. It's nice to have those two games and nice to give those two performances, but it's only two games. Uh, we've got another very challenging task on Saturday to play against Everton, who have also started brilliantly and have strengthened their team in particular as well. They're looking particularly strong at the moment, so let's wait and see how the Everton and Chelsea games go before we start drawing too many conclusions but uh, I am happy with the two games I am very happy with the six points and it certainly does take some of the pressure that we thought we'd be under with these first four games when we looked at the fixture list when it came out in August Carlo is somebody you list as a you count as a friend you've said that previously ever so another club who've made a very strong start six points out of six do you like the look of the business they've done because they look significantly different to the side that played out the restart? Yes, without a doubt. I thought they were a little bit unlucky last year um, not to finish higher than they did because I thought last year they were a good team too but there's no doubt that the players they brought in this year have made a considerable difference and of course getting Gomez back from injury uh, has probably helped as well but I think the size of Ducre and James Rodriguez and, and Allen are three excellent signings and of course they are made to measure signings they're the signings that Carlo has made in connection or in, in tandem with his board of directors which have filled in the slots that he thought needed really filling in and the, getting the profile of the players that he, he wanted for those slots so I congratulate him on that he, he is a friend from my Italian days and I'm looking forward to seeing him albeit uh, I'm not so much looking forward to the challenge that his team are going to present on Saturday. You've spoken about Sai Ben Rama of Brentford in recent weeks. Is he still a player you want to, to bring to Crystal Palace? How's it progressive? Because if part of anything else, he's going to have a quite tough job break into your forward line if things stay as they are. Well, that's, you know, that's the, the way you phrase the question is quite dangerous. You know, you know I have spoken about Sai Ben Rama. Uh, his name has been circulated as have many other players really in relation to our club and of course when those things happen I I play along with it in the sense that I neither say yes we want him or no we don't and that's where I still am I have said when his name has come up that he's a very good quality football player that we know Uh, but how close that makes him to joining us uh, remains very much to be seen and I certainly don't have any real interest at the moment in discussing any players that we're linked with because otherwise uh, you can be here a long time. Uh, Crystal Palace get linked with an awful lot of players, some of which are genuine and some of which are just, I suppose, attempts from the agents to put their players in the shop window. Can I ask you finally about David Carragher? He wrote in the Times this week that he doesn't believe Will Sahar is quite good enough to play for a Liverpool or Manchester City at this stage. Is that a fair comment from one of your former players or does it seem slightly strange in light of the match-winning form he showed at United last week? 
Yeah, once again, it's the same as the previous question, really. I, I never, ever get involved with other people and, and, and their comments. I think every person, especially if they're in a position, as Jamie is, where people are being asked, or he's being asked, to, to give opinions and to, to say what he thinks about individual players, and he's very much entitled to that opinion, but there's certainly no way I'm going to get into any form of polemics with, with him and uh, exchanges of opinion. Um, everyone knows how I feel about Wilf and how highly I rate him, but I perfectly, I understand perfectly well that there are other people who have other opinions and other judgments, and they're they're entitled to them. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, then we'll move to Mark Scott, BBC. Um PLP today. Yeah, PLP today. Um, as uh, Aidan was saying, uh, Roy, um, you know, still a lengthy injury list, but once you've got all your players back, looking at the way Czech's been playing at centre half, the fact that Luca can't get into central midfield, and the players you've brought in up front and Tyrick doing well at the back, is this possibly the most competitive squad you'll have at Palace um, once you've got them back from injury? Yes, absolutely. There's no question of that, but we needed it too because quite. A few times in the past, you know, we don't think our squad has been big enough or competitive enough, but we're working hard now to address that and redress the balance. And uh, I, I'm liking the look at the moment of the squad and its potential. But first of all, we have to get those injured players back, and there's still quite a few of them in the treatment room, far, far too many for my liking. But let's hope that after this next international break, your Prediction will come to pass, and the squad will be looking a lot, a lot stronger. What is the latest sort of team news? Are anyone likely to be back for the game on Saturday? That's been out. Well, Christian benteke has been training all of this week, so that's uh, someone I could 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 count on, of course, for the game. Um, one or two others are sort of starting to make an appearance, but it's a very brief appearance and really doesn't get far beyond the the warm up and any sort of non-contact passing work that might be done. Um, but otherwise, we, we're still looking at pretty much the squad we had last week, I think. How much are you enjoying that sort of competition for places um, in your position as manager, given that it's not been something you've been too used to since you've been in charge at Palace? I think I enjoy it from the club's point of view and I enjoy it from the players' point of view because there's no doubt that players need that little edge, if you like, to their game. They need to see in training that the people around them are playing very well and are more than capable of taking their place unless they can keep their standard to the high level that is required. So I think having competition for places is good for everybody at the football club, really, and certainly as a manager you need it because these days we've long since come away from believing that football is an 11 a side game uh, especially during the lockdown period when we were getting used to it being a, a 16 man game but certainly it's very rare these days to see a team start with 11 and finish with 11 so the quality of your bench and the quality of the players that can come on and help you at stages of the game becomes of vital importance and just finally for me on Everton um, obviously great start for them as well what, what do you see as the main threats that they pose this season compared to the team that you would have come up against last season? Well, I think they, they've added to, to, their, to their attacking threat. I mean, certainly Calvert-Lewin is getting better every year, which one would expect because he's such a good quality player. Richarlison, of course, another one who started well enough but gets better. But most importantly, I think the signings of Ducure, Allen and James Rodriguez have given them an extra boost, if you like, to the attacking options and the quality of their attacking play, as does the return of Gomez, who was missing for a large part of last season. So I don't necessarily think that there are enormous changes in the way that they're playing or trying to play. It's really more a question uh, of the quality that's now there uh, to enable the style of play that Carlo wants to produce to be produced. Thank you, Roy. My pleasure. Thanks very much. We're going to Ian Abrahams from TalkSport. Hi, Roy. How are you? Ian, I'm good, thank you. Good. Um, 14 years since Palace started with back-to-back -back wins, and to your best starts, you're at Blackburn in 1997. So, 
um, it really is something of a, a new departure. Yeah, I mean, it's always nice to get off to a good start. Everyone talks about that, but it, um, I'm, I'm far too conscious of the fact that it's a 38-game season and two, two in 38 is not a great proportion. And I also seem to think that often good seasons, uh, they come about with what you produce at the end. That, that last spurt of eight games is often the one that, in my experience, has kept teams in the league or... <coughs> pardon me can lift you up the league so um, it's nice but I don't I don't get carried away with it and I'm certainly not expecting the players to get carried away with it albeit it's much nicer when people are talking well about the team and, and saying they're doing well than the opposite absolutely I mean you, you mentioned there about how the new signs to Corre Alan and Hamid Rodriguez um, every Chiesa has, has shown signs in, in frame Impressive side so far, and Tyrone Mitchell must be delighted with the way he started the season. Yeah, we're happy with our signings too. I mean, we haven't yet had the chance to really assess Nathan Ferguson, although we do believe in him. There's no question of that. But certainly, the two that we've brought in, Berechieze and Michi Batshuayi, they've they've been fantastic since they, they they've come in and shown everybody that they can definitely improve the quality of our play and our competition. And of course, Tyreek, he. He got his chance at the end of last season when Patrick dislocated his shoulder, took that chance well, and has really continued since the start of the new season in the, in the friendlies and these opening two matches. So he's definitely been a, a plus for us, um, and I hope that he will continue to improve, and I also hope that people won't start putting exceptional pressure on him because he's still a very young man and he's still in the in the absolute um, nursery if you like in terms of his career well I was about to just do that because I was going to say without wishing to go for the headline Roy says he's as good as Wamba Saka um, do you think he's got the potential from what you saw when Aaron came through and played for you that he's, he can similarly do a similar job well yes I'd have to say yes to that because I mean that's a fair question and I've got absolutely no reason for suggesting that Aaron looked very much like uh, Tyreek when he came in and sort of took, if you like, the the game by storm and, and, and made the position his own very, very quickly and, of course, continued from there to have a fantastic season and not just a few games. You know, he had a few games one season and a whole 38 games where he hardly put a foot wrong. So Tyreek knows what he's got in front of him, but... I wouldn't disagree with you to say that uh, in terms of a start, in terms of being thrown in, if you like, with no one knowing much about him, I think there's a direct parallel between the two players. Um, last week, Baron Morgan Lindelof and then subsequently the one with Spurs and Doherty has raised questions about quite how many penalties are going to be given away this season. D- does that worry you, the, the fact that intent has been taken out of the rules now and just that the ball strikes the hand, it's going to be given as a penalty? Well, there's always been rules in football that I haven't totally agreed with. Um, does it bother me? Well, I, I can't allow it to bother me because it, it's, it's a fact of life. You know, I have to learn to, to live with it. I don't get my choice, if you like, of, of rules and interpretations of rules. I have to go along with the masses. Um, when I ask my opinion, I give it and have been quite vocal even in... in, in saying that for me handball in these situations should be deliberate and shouldn't be a question of where your hands happen to be Uh, but I've been obviously voted down on that one and other people are quite happy to see these penalty type situations occurring but uh, I don't get any joy from it and I've got to say that I wasn't jumping around when that ball hit Lindelof's hand screaming for a penalty and if the referee hadn't given the penalty there'd have been no protest from my side. Well, I've got to finish with both related kind of to COVID-19. First of all, we saw the West Ham, David Moyes, testing positive a couple of players to show that this is still a very dangerous time even for professional football clubs whereby it was, you know, I know everything is done at training grounds to make sure it's as near as, as possible, 100% safe to play for Yeah, they've done a fantastic job, but uh, I think that there is more testing now, so presumably we are hearing about more people actually having contracted the disease. 
What worries me or frightens me is when people have to go to intensive care units of, of hospitals and it seems to me that in football we haven't had anybody whose name has been linked with the, the virus as yet in a hospital even, let alone the intensive care unit. So perhaps until such time as that happens, I'll just accept this as being a, a, a fact, if you like, of our daily lives that unfortunately more and more people as the testing gets increased, are going to be shown to have the virus. And I'm just hoping that all of them will recover uh, after a period of sickness without having to go into hospital and, you know, certainly run the risk, if you like, of falling very seriously. Well, I wish David and, and, and the other two players all the very best, of course, but uh, as you rightly say, it's there, but for the grace of God go I at the moment. and. Every time you have a test, your heart is in your mouth because we've been told so many times that you can have the virus and yet feel perfectly well. So all the time that's the case. Every time you have a test, your heart's in your mouth to see what result you're going to get on this occasion. I mean, just very quickly, the National League are going to have a vote about whether or not they start their season a couple of weeks without fans. If they don't, they may not. Uh, may cancel the whole season. They may put it back. That could affect the FA Cup because we've seen teams before. Seems like Premier League team have to play non league sides in the cup. How much how much do we need grassroots football to to exist this season mm. with the, the struggles they're gonna have? Well we need grassroots football, the you know, football's a pyramid and we don't wish to lose the base of the pyramid just because we happen to be at the apex of the pyramid. But I don't have the answer to, to, to their problems and it's 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 very concerning and very distressing to hear that many of them are gonna have to maybe close down for a period of time and, and maybe not even start leagues because they can't afford to continue. Um, but I don't wish to get involved and give my opinions about what the real solution to that is. Um, I can only empathise with them and, 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 and say it's a, a great shame, if you like, to lose so many football matches at, at grassroots level. But I've got to say, I don't think for us Premier League clubs it's going to have a great effect on the FA Cup. Thank you so much, Roy. My pleasure. Thanks, Ian. OK, we'll finish the board session with just a question to Ben Mountain from the club. I can't hear. Um, ben, can you try again? Can you hear me now? Try again. Can you hear me? I'll jump in for yeah, that. Yeah, Dan, come on. Can you hear me okay, Roy? Yep, I can hear him. Excellent. Um, Where are you? Oh, right, yeah, okay. Uh, John Ward will be making his 250th appearance for Palace. Firstly, what an impressive achievement is that, and what's it been like to manage? Well, it is an impressive appear, uh, achievement. There's no question of that. 250 games is an awful lot of games for the club. I, I presume that's not just premiership games, that's cup. Cup games yeah, as well, yeah. Cup games too. But even so, 250 games is a lot of games. Uh, I think he's been very, very reliable, very consistent in his performances. I think he's playing better than at any other stage during my time working with him. And my time working with him has been good throughout because he's a, a super professional, a very hard working player, always gives his absolute best. And of course, he's a very tough and solid defender. But I think he's adding things to his game as he goes along, as he gets a little bit older. He's still got plenty of years of football left in him. And uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that 250 games for Crystal Palace go way, way beyond that. And I'm hoping that's what he's targeting. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Roy. Pleasure. OK, thank you, everyone. That concludes the broadcast section.